Hey guys, today's video I'm going to talk about power supply filter capacitor values as it applies to audio power amplifiers. And for this example we're going to use a split supply, full wave rectified, has the zero voltage reference, a positive rail and a negative rail. And as you might know, with a power supply you have a filter capacitor because you know the rectified AC waveform is going to be big pulses so you put the capacitor in there so you get a smooth or relatively smooth DC rail and in this picture here the sine wave is the output signal of the amplifier and to the side to the left side of this vertical line here we're using a larger value capacitor so there's smaller ripple and to the right of the line a smaller value capacitor which has larger ripple because of course the smaller capacitor discharges more during or between the cycles or between the peaks I should say and what happens here is you can see you have less voltage headroom on your rails and the sine wave could actually run into one of those dips and you have clipping. Now this actually these uh, ripple on the rails here will actually vary depending on the load. I'm just keeping them the same for the sake of simplicity but I set up a circuit and look at the scope and uh, take a look at what it really looks like. And of course the frequency of the sine wave versus the frequency of the ripple you'll have some odd harm, um, beating effects kind of a zhuh, 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 as the clipping goes in and out and but my the main purpose of this video is to show how much capacitance you need and how it affects your power output so we'll draw some curves I'll run a bunch of tests and uh, we'll take a look and see what the results are. Okay, I have a little power supply set up. I have a uh, little Radio Shack 2 amp 25.2 volt transformer with a center tap, full wave bridge. Those are diodes I got out of that TV set I tore apart a few videos ago. And the filter caps. And this is just. Uh, set up for the input potentiometer and a uh, output going to use a 4 ohm load and 8 ohm load to test right now I'm connected to a speaker so we can listen to what it sounds like and uh, using the LM1875 chip amp had a little uh, lab amp I guess I made here for experimenting okay I'm scoping the uh, positive rail so grounds on zero and the probe is on the plus and as the amplifier sits idle here's the ripple I'm starting out with very low value capacitors these are a hundred microfarads and you know we're getting a good 980 millivolts almost a volt of ripple that's pretty high ripple and you know if you're taking consideration the negative rail too you have about a volt of ripple there so there's pretty big ripple on this supply right now with these low value caps however to show you how good amp this amplifier is at rejecting the ripple noise I don't know if you can hear it. There's a very light amount of hum. It's very quiet. The amplifier is, has very good supply rejection. So no hum at all. But right now I have a sine wave sweep I'll play. And we'll take a look at what happens here. And we're obviously clipping 
and as there's power drawn on the rail it pulls it down more and it's a frequency sweep so it's gonna change in frequency we can if I turn the level down so it's not clipping anymore I'm not you know, actually I'm not sure if it's clipping or it's pulling the voltage down to below the amplifiers operating voltage and just you know it starts cutting out so yeah I'm not sure if that's actually clipping or not I'd have to look at that now I'm playing a uh, 5 Hertz wave and you can see as the currents drawn it's pulling that capacitor voltage down causing that wave effect let me turn this down and see it going there well let's see what it sounds like if we play ordinary music okay let's play some music of course I'm using that same song I always use I think it's the only one that I don't get a, a copyright notice on. But the amplifier sounds perfect. But we are playing at a low level. Let's turn it up. And you're starting to hear that noise. You know, I'm not sure if that's clipping. Clipping, you the onset of clipping is fairly subtle. You don't notice it when it's just starting with music normally. And that's a loud crack. I, I think the voltage is being pulled down and causing the amplifier chip to shut down. And that's what's making that noise. But anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and hook up the non-inductive 4 ohm load. And we'll check 8 ohm load. We'll take some measurements and see what the output power is with these little 100 microfarad filter capacitors. Okay, have the 8 ohm resistor hooked up. And you can see the power frequency kind of waving through this uh, 1 kilohertz waveform. And I'll have to tune this down so that that goes away and take that as the voltage and I don't really see it occurring anymore now yeah, maybe a little bit there and drop it down I'm just taking it up till it goes away and it's So we're getting uh, four, a little over four volts RMS. Well, I went ahead and fine-tuned my measurements, and with the 8 ohm load using the 100 microfarad capacitors, it's getting an out output voltage of 3.84 volts RMS. And uh, with that 8 ohm load, that's 1.843 watts went ahead and did the 4 ohm load and it's actually a bit less got a 2.56 RMS volt output and that came out to 1.638 watts even less than the 8 ohm load normally you'd think you'd have a stronger output with the 4 ohm load but not with those little bitty capacitors okay so what I'll do is just go through a bunch of different capacitor values and I'll uh, put it in a spreadsheet and make a graph and all that fun stuff and come back with the results okay got all the measurements done this is the capacitors this is the output voltage RMS output voltage at 8 ohms 4 ohms the output power at 8 ohms and output at 4 ohms 
I went through all the different values of filtering caps, took measurements, and then I did a graph. You see, it's not quite curved linear, probably due to some error in measurements. You know, getting the exact, you know, point on the scope where the the clipping was gone, but you still get the idea. As we increase the capacitance, you can see our output power goes way up. You know, we're down here with the hundred microfarads. We we're only putting it getting out uh, you know just under two watts barely over a watt and a half with four ohm loads then when we went to 330 microfarads you can see it really jumped up but the uh, the four ohm started getting ahead of the eight ohm like it should all the way up to 10,000 microfarads or with eight ohms we got 12 watts and forums we got 19 watts it's not double of course you know half the impedance you should double the wattage but you have to remember that the uh, voltage and the transformer sags and some losses in the amplifier itself you're not going to exactly double that so pretty interesting just changing the capacitance value of the filter caps is significant on uh, the output power however you do notice that it at a certain point it you don't get much return on your investment when you go over about 200 or 2200 microfarads the output doesn't increase much you can see it kind of starts to flatten out so there's a point where you know, increasing the value of the capacitance doesn't help much but you do have to remember this is just a single channel amplifier if it was stereo yeah it would make difference because you have a second amplifier you know pulling uh, current from the filter caps so you'd have to uh, consider that if you're building a stereo amp and that's why I tend to go with uh, at least 6,800 microfarads or even uh, with my computer amp over there I went with 10,000 microfarad capacitors. Well I guess that's about it. Pretty neat experiment and thanks for watching.